Hey guys, welcome to another video brought to you by Total Control Traders. This is the part two of ticker review. If you know anyone that's that may benefit from the content we provide, please consider retweeting and sharing our channel. All right, so we're gonna switch it up. Instead of going through all of Dow's tickers, uh, I thought about it. You know, with the daily bear divergence that is currently forming, it might defeat the purpose. To, we might be too late to look for that strange chart right now. There's been, there's been four bounces from this pandemic trend line already. And upon this next daily bear divergence, now if we don't, there's another day or two, there's a, still a chance that we can negate this. <clears throat> We're going to need to blast, blast pretty far away from the daily eight. So the chances of that, I'm looking at this, is uh, it's pretty slim. So a similar idea, you know, you do a quick measurement. 1.8% was the last time. This was about 1.3. The furthest we got extended to the upside from the day 88, 2.2. Okay, 2.2%. Let's say we blast 2.2%. Okay, so there's a chance. There is a chance for us to negate this daily bear flag. But we're, we're gonna need to see some strong bull action over the next few days. So with that being said, um, it's kind of, regardless, it's gonna be kind of late, you know, it's since November run till now, Dow's run 27% 20, already. Uh, we don't wanna be looking for bull plays while the market might potentially change the other way. It's gonna be, especially when there's like 30 some, 40 some tickers left. So instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on those tickers that uh, are gonna be more beneficial in the sense that whether they're hottest, they have nice setups coming up kind of things. All right, let's get into the tickers. First one. No, we did not cover this. Okay, PSTH. I'm try trying to think if we covered it in the video earlier today. PSTH has a really nice entry coming up. Really? Oh, actually, Friday, Thursday, Friday, or even today. Any of those days would have been a nice entry. First entry, small entry. You know, it's been, we have lost... Now about 30% back back down to the IPO prices. And you can see, so the last time that I covered this video, I s highlighted this key zone. And you can see the previous three touches, three rejections from the key, the top of the key zone. And now it's becoming a support, a back test. The part that we were looking for. And we got it on Thursday, Friday, and today. So from here, this was the low risk entry right at the top of the zone, right around, come on, come on. Okay, there we go, 23.44. So today we got to 23.43, three, two, one penny off. From here, we're gonna need to see the reversal. There is a slight, very slight bullish divergence as well. So tomorrow going to Wednesday, we're going to need to see that reversal confirmation. So this is bounce, and now we're going to need to see that reversal, making a higher low, followed by a higher high. Okay. So next one, keep your eyes on PSTH. Volume is not so interesting yet. We could just break down to new all-time low which is the IPO day, 21.50 IPO low, as well as all-time low. But risk to reward wise, you know, with 23.44, you're risking two bucks for even to the 0.382, you'd be looking up four, well, from here about four, three to four dollars. So risk to reward is still decent, but you want to be looking for that better, bigger move. So 
No, it's up to you. But PSTH, low risk entry. Next is, I'm gonna cover V, no, CCIV. Let's take a look at that one. All right, head and shoulders breaking, broken bear, broken bear on the neckline. So this is the left shoulder head and no, this is not a valid pattern. Never mind. Trends already re trend is already reversed from here. So from here, ooh, this uh, fib extension target is gonna be low. Yeah, not even gonna be on the chart. So I wouldn't be playing this twenty. $20.40, you could try doing a bottom fish play from here. 2040, easy stop, you know, put it a few cents under. What I would do is probably the rejection from here, where you can also see a support from here. So $1.70 in risk versus the upside quite a bit, you know, three times $40 kind of thing, potential. Even to the GP, you'd be looking at 47 so risk to reward for ccib is there if you're looking at a bottom fish plate of 20 dollars and 40 cents and what else do we have rb rblx haven't looked at this in some time coming back gap down and sell off today relative weakness to the market we didn't get to the gp this is interesting. No reason to reject here. So it looks like technical analysis is not exactly working right now. It might be because it's so new. It could be just finding starting to develop some pattern. So be patient on RBLX if you're looking to play. Um, wait for a clear pattern to develop. There is a potential for inverse head and shoulders. I would say more so on the four hours. Looks a lot clearer on the four hours. So left shoulder, head. Let's see where that right shoulder forms. Neckline is going to be not very clear. Gonna be somewhere around there. So RBOX. Decent play. Gonna have to watch for that right shoulder. Meaning, we're gonna want to see at least a hold, uh, at the very minimum, a hold of the GP. Ideally, the 0.5. All right, next is the score PYR. Okay, covered all that. YouTube requests. Uh, give me one sec here. YouTube request from Austin. First one, THBR. Thunderbridge Acquisition 2. Thank you for commenting, Austin, and thank you for watching the videos. Glad to have you with us. Seems like there is a clear trend line. Somewhere. I like it here. And then let's see if we can find another one. It looks like there is. Just need to find out where it is. Somewhere around there. So essentially is a descending wedge. Yeah, they're all valid. Um, never closed over. So one, two, three, four, five rejections now. And one, two, three, four supports so far. Seems like we might be finding a bottom. Q 
key support around that 990, 994, 998 area. If this is lost, it could get scary. So we got to 981. Not really any key supports there. 10.38. This might work better. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, so this is the key area to hold. You cannot close under that 9.94. Two bounces from the bottom. Three rejections from the top before breaking over. Back test key right here. Back tested the top of the key zone before an actual breakout. Now descending wedge. 994 held. The 88 is grinding down along that 88. You can see it. we broke down under the 88. Reject on the touch. Reject on the touch, triple touch again, and then the increased momentum saw off again. And now we are having trouble with the Deity 8 again. The last time, this was actually a very nice, this would have been a very nice entry. You know, if you had the pattern drawn out, because there's already been two, two touches on the bottom, multiple touches on the top. So this was an easy pattern to identify, and you find that key zone. You know, it probably wouldn't get have gotten a entry around right on 994. Likely not. I would say around you know 10 bucks. That would have been an amazing entry. 20% bounce from there. Um, even to the upper trend line 1187. That's still 10, 18%. Yeah, that was a very nice. That would have been a very nice play. From here, I'm getting a getting. I would be a little bit worried. No, bull volume is outweighing bear volume, but it's a spike, nothing, spike, nothing, spike, nothing. So, you know, comparing to here, this consistent buying, I would be looking at use that daily eight as you guys don't be early on your entry. You could try fishing off of 994 or even 981 and then place a stop like right under there kind of thing. Um, because if we just slowly grind down on this daily eight, there is going to be no support. These are all, you look at this, there is no real volume here, okay? There is no volume, meaning there's no real support that was developed from back here. You could say, no, nah, you couldn't. Yeah. If it breaks down with no support, there could be a whole lot more downside to come. And even if you look at this wedge, you know, it could just continue to grind down all the way into what am I? Oh, I'm on four hours. All the way into end of the year, coming down to a dollar. Don't think it'll happen. They're probably gonna. You know, the longest it'll go is probably to, somewhere to here in November, four dollar range. But yeah, next is FSLY Fastly. Wow, it's been a long time since I looked at this chart. Fastly. Look, it's a good thing that I haven't looked at this chart. It hasn't really done much. Let's uh, clean up the chart. Just start from fresh. Choppy chart. Not really seeing any clear trend lines. Let's see if this one works. Nope. Nothing over here either. Okay, so it is choppy chart. You can see triple touch here. So this is obviously a trend line, that a support trend line. And, but then the next one we broke down fake out, got bought up over two days. And then we did find support on that trend line again. We did find support here as well before a breakdown fake out again. And then we are finding support here again. So it's it's a choppy chart. Um, even if you were to play off of the trend line Thursday, Friday, or even today, 
you know it's decent entries but it's very very it can very easily fake you out as for the upper trend line I'd be looking at somewhere around here and as for the balance wise and now this, there's a lot of potential to the up upside but the chart is still weak look at the volume there is no buying just all bare volume bull volumes are so little earnings earnings was bad okay so there is a gap down key resistance maybe somewhere around here so you can see let's see even pull it back to here rejection got over became and then back tested multiple supports so that 7666 is a very clear area that needs to be broken so it's okay to be late on this one first sign um, as I always say watch the 30 so it's chopping around the 30 you know if you start seeing a curl making a trend so a train a trend change making a higher high higher low higher high that is a trend change that's the first sign second is the RD. so we are still grinding down along the RD8 and then third is the four hours haven't been trading over it since the 16th then the daily so upon the four hours you can start finding your entry you don't want to be early on this name though if it does break down the next support down you're looking at next key support is going to be around there 48 bucks yeah so let's see 62 that's still quite a bit of a drop 20% there is no support whatsoever here okay so easy descending wedge to play but watch for the reversal first don't be early all right next let's watch let's go over a uh, few interesting charts that I came across Did we go over TDOC? Don't think so. TDOC. Let's do TDOC. We did CCIV. Fubo and QS, we haven't gone over. Okay, yeah, let's do that. TDOC. TDOC. Kathy's been buying. But remember, previous performances does not dictate future performances. Meaning, Kathy has done very well in 2020. Beginning of 2021 does not mean that the going forward is going to do very well as well. Um, a lot of the growth stocks have done really, really well 2020, 2021. But does not mean you will see the same performance. All right. So TDOC, we are finding support. Oh, it's getting weak. Decreasing bear volume though, so that's not bad. On the daily, there is a daily bull divergence. You know, you can probably remove this, but regardless, there's a daily bull divergence. This trend line must hold. This is the last, the last um, weaker momentum trend line versus the previous stronger momentum trend line has already been broken bear and back tested and now we're at the lower trend line so with this if we were to break under the trend line we'd be looking down around 174 uh, 147 71 you can see key resistance you can mark a zone here, but this price works very well. 147.64. Rejection, two, three, broke over. Found support after a breakdown fake out. And then back tested before it actually went. So 147.64 would be the next support down if this key zone and trend line is lost. This right now 
worth a bottom fish play. Volume looking nice, divergence looking nice, where we're bouncing from the confluence of key zone as well as trend line. This is worth a play. Yeah, I love what the chart is doing. Lots of upside potential. Only thing is, I probably won't be playing it personally. I might. Um, but I'm being extremely cautious on bull, new bull positions. Just because of uh, the th when I look at the market, the thesis I have, the both bulls as well as bears. You know, if you haven't looked at the videos, check out Friday's video or Saturday's video. And maybe... I can't remember if I discussed it today's video as well on market. But yeah, I'm being extremely cautious on this is, I would call this a golden setup though. Divergence, triple reasons for you to get in. Divergence, trend line, key zone. Cannot get any better than this. And it's a relatively strong bull divergence. Very strong bull divergence. All right, next is T-Doc. What do we say? Fubo QS. And this is the kind of, uh, just an example of why I'm a little bit hesitant on getting in bull positions. This is a very nice, what was it, week, weekly? Yeah, this was a very nice weekly bull divergence. And yet the bounce, okay, that, that's not bad, 33%. Uh, balance was not bad, 33%, but on the weekly bull divergence, we were unable to break over the weekly 8. Now, this one ticker does not dictate all other tickers, but this just goes to show, you know, there is a lot of tickers that we were previously watching before. They were very strong before, um, and... It, as the market is making new high now, we are seeing relative weakness in a lot of those tickers. So even if you were to you know, play the balance, this was only, let's say you got in, you waited you know, the next day. This is probably a shorter term, shorter time frame bull divergence in here. 30%, oh wait, 30% in six days. That's not bad. But then it's just straight rejection from there. So I'm looking at longer plays. You now, generally my plays are three days or more. I want longer plays and bigger payouts. Something that I can just hold in case that, you know, my computer is down, internet is down, something I don't have to worry about it too much. I can just take the day off if need be. It's more stress-free because essentially this trade, this career trading is a long, long-term plan versus, you know, it's not something you just come in, you do it, you make a million dollars, two million, and then you just walk away kind of thing. Not to me. Anyways, I'm looking at doing this for long-term. And that's why I don't want to be too stressed out. So the next support down is relatively quite a bit of a ways away. Actually, there might be some support here. Oh, what's with this chart? I don't think this is the same ticker before. Was it? Fubo? <clears throat> Anyways. One, two. Essentially, this is a head and shoulders that's playing out. Regardless of how you look at it, you know, you, you can look at it left shoulder here head and then the big right shoulder or left shoulder here head and then the right shoulder that's now broken and then is getting even further follow through so just i i would anticipate anticipate further downside towards that 13 13 15 13 50 to 1573 next one is qs let's try to speed this up a little bit I think I'm covering each ticker, spending too much time on them. So still relative weak. Back in the key, in the key zone again. This 
this price right here seem to have lots of reactions. 42.40. So unable to close down under, bounce from there, wicked from there, and bounce from there again. And now seems like we're coming 42, 42.33, close is 42.40. Oh, seven cents away. That must hold or else we'll be looking down at the lower part of the key zone before further follow through. Chart still remains weak though. Next is, let's go over some stronger charts. Coca-Cola. Ooh. Coca-Cola, slow mover. Blue chips, DAOs have been moving nicely. Blue chips, banking, as well as DAOs. So the conservatives, uh, the value stocks, yeah, conservative portfolios, value stocks, they have been performing a whole lot better. There is a very clear sector rotation. You know, if you look at the market today, Russell was the only one that was red, I believe. Yeah, Russell was the only one that was red. Aftermarket is green right now. But yeah, uh, if you're looking at making some money, this it's not going to be, the return is not going to be as nice, I don't think, going forward. Unless you're playing bears on certain sectors, for example, Russell, maybe even NAS kind of things. And you're getting, you got to get your timing on spot or else there's not a whole lot of gains. Or the easier way to make money nowadays would be to look at the blue chips, the conservatives, not the tech, you know, not tech blue chip, but just the blue chip conservative banking. Um, NASDAQ or sorry, Dow, you might be a bit late already. So let's look at Coca-Cola. Huge bull volume on the 19th. This was the goal signal. Nice follow through immediately. Actually, to, no, next day we gap down. Gap down and then immediately bought up. That was the goal signal. Bullish engulfing candlestick following this type of volume. Amazing. From there we saw nothing but follow through. It has moved for Coca Cola. This is a very decent move. 7% already. Look at the hold of this trend line. Um, yeah, two touches from before and then a hold right here. Amazing. The move alone though has only been five bucks, which is 12% over 40 trading days. So you gotta get used to, if you're looking to trade this kind of tickers, the blue chip values kind of things, it's gonna take time. It's gonna be slow or you could go aggressive on options. Not something I normally recommend, but regardless, they are slow movers. Next is Emil. Altria. Ooh, still bullish as hell, eh? Inside bar day. Little bit of a stall. Daily bear divergence. Let's see if there's a follow through tomorrow. Inside bar. That is strong considering daily bear divergence. There's a potential for daily bull flag to form here. Weekly, I think we're still extended. Yep. So a little bit of a pullback would make sense on Altria. But overall, the chart remains strong. Next is PFE. It's grinding along that daily eight. Daily eight is your guide. Look at this. Bull flag is closed under only once with lack of follow through. Next day, gapped up a little bit, little bit of buying up. And then hold of that idea again. And now we're seeing some follow through. Pattern wise. Not much of a follow. So the good thing about this chart is there's potential for head and shoulders here with do this. Shoulders, head, shoulders with the neckline of right about here. We broke there, saw some decent follow through, but we were unable to break the lows from back here. Uh, come on.
seems like it's a key price. You can see rejection here, support, support, and then slight rejection here as well. So keep, make make a note of 33.44 seems to be the key price. And I think I wanted to take a look at Exxon. Last time I looked at it, it was relatively strong. We are still in that channel inside bar day today. Over, still trading over that 88, decreasing bull volume. My Siri thinks I'm talking to her. Not seeing much of a divergence now. This was an amazing hold on the lower trend line of the channel though. So watch for follow through. If lack of follow through, we have moved quite a bit over 100%. Oh, didn't mark the bottom. 101% since the bottom, since the beginning of this bullish run. From here, if we were to start consolidating, so if we were to make a lower high, followed by a lower low, we will be looking at a little bit longer term consolidation than you wanna be looking at the FIB from this whole move wise. First part I'm looking at is still this GP of this last move, aligning up, which aligns with the previous high, now looking at it also in confluence with this whole moves 0.382. So if we were to break down, find a balance from here, that would still be strong. That would actually be an ideal entry right around there. Let's mark that. $50 to $51. All right, so let's do a recap. Um, let's do a recap of what tickers I like that we have seen, we've gone over. Actually, there's one more I wanna look at, skills. Ooh, not looking good. We are still holding that one to one extension, that key support of 1776 though. 1767 broke down by a few pennies, 1784 today. Gonna need to see a curl from here. This inverse head and shoulders pattern is already been negated. Still remaining in that channel. You, I would have expected a bounce from here, a stronger bounce from here. The lower trend line of the channel lining up with one to one extension lining up with this previous support would have expected a stronger bounce i guess it might take one more day watching skills tomorrow all right um let's go over some of the what i was looking at what i will be looking at this week first one skills going into tomorrow want to see that curl with bull volume coming in early this huge bull volume lack of follow through breaking down to the new low little bit concerning this is a must hold easy stop play stop right under if i give it a little bit of room 1750 kind of thing and then the other top watch t doc that I would consider playing bullish. TDOC, strong daily bull divergence, following trend line, key trend line to hold, as well as previous key zone. Now you can see resistance and support, another support down here. This right now is a must hold, and we're gonna need to see a curl from here. So easy stop, same as skills type of play. Um, M. Okay, a little bit lack of follow through. I was looking at this on Sunday. Uh, so without this candle, back test of the wedge break that we finally saw decent wedge break with follow through pulling away and now we're seeing it back test. Okay, so far it's still not bad because it is decreasing bear volume, but you're gonna need to start seeing a pull away from here, that next leg up. If not, it's gonna be a little bit concerning because we will be looking at this whole move, which has been 400 percent has it been 400 percent on macy's holy 
Um, no. Why? Am I math that bad? No, it's at least 300%. 557 to $21. Oh, wait, okay. Yeah, okay. 278. I forgot about like, the original 100%. Your principal 100%. So it's moved 278% over 111 days. If we were to start consolidating from here, because we can see rejection on the daily 8 following this back test of this trend line, we could be looking down at the GP, which would line up with the stall zone. $11. Be careful on your entry. Watch for the reversal first. I probably mark it somewhere around there. Yeah, somewhere around there. You can see it broke over back test. So that $12, $12 range. Ideal entry will be around $11 range. Let's see if there's bullish follow through or bearish follow through over the next two, three days. Gonna need to see a, a curl sign. All right, next is AES. Nice hold of the wedge. So we discussed this on Sunday. And this was today's candle. Inside bar, nothing significant. Low bear volume. This is looking nice. Tomorrow should show us a direction. If we see an increasing bear volume coming back down to the lower trend line of the wedge, that's concerning. Wouldn't play that. Uh, however, if we start seeing bull bullish volume breaking over that 88, we will be looking back up to the upper trend line, key resistance of 2850-ish. That's about an 8% move. But upon this retest, it's going to be the fourth touch. So there's a chance. So the three touches on the top, four touches on the bottom already. There's a chance that we're going to break bull if we continue to come back up to retest this high. All right. AMGN is the other one that's interesting. Ooh, we broke bullish today. Seems to like to give a bit of a fake out though. Oh, that trend line did apply. One rejection, two, three right here, four right here. Don't like that upper wick. We're going to need to see same idea as, was it MO? Um, or was it Macy's? We're going to need to pull away from the trend line before another back test and then another leg up. But right now we are already seeing a little bit of weakness. We are a little bit extended from the day D8 already. Not too far though. So there is still room. I'm gonna want to see a pull away on AMGN. So those are the top watches for this week. For the, this week. Uh, that's it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed the content. It, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're looking for that financial freedom and enjoy the content we provide, please consider subscribing to our channel where we provide new videos daily. And remember, the best compliment you can give is by spreading the word about our channel. Also, make sure to check out our website and Twitter, website at TotalControlTraders.com and Twitter at underscore TCTraders underscore. We offer subscription model to our chatting platform where trading ideas are shared, charts are reviewed live, as well as my personal trade callouts with the last most recent result of 90% success rate from March 1st to March 15th. Hope you guys stay safe and be in control. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.